just like that, we have a Carrera GT. Oh my gosh, that is beautiful. That is absolutely gorgeous. And coming up on my left, we also have a GT3 996. Okay, so we're starting today off a lot different than normal. It has been a long time since I have done a vlog on the channel. I've been watching some of my old content from 2017 and 2018, and I really want to bring back that old school feel, at least for one more video. And uh, today is Sunday, it's cars and coffee. I gotta go fill up, then I gotta go wash the car, meet up with some friends, and have a great time. And I wanna bring you guys along with me, because I do miss the vlog content. It kind of personalizes everything, and it's a step away from uh, the normal feature videos that I do, and I, I just wanna relax and enjoy today. So, I also wanna use this opportunity to discuss a topic that's been on my mind over the last few months, and that is, can car enthusiasts love electric cars? Because as you guys know, I've been filming a lot of electric cars lately, and people are beginning to notice. People in my life are starting to notice. So when I go to events, people are like, oh, all you do is film electric cars now. And then I had people that don't even know me, don't even know that I even uh, have a YouTube channel saying, car enthusiasts cannot like electric cars. So I wanna dive in that discussion today and uh, just have a good time. So just filled up, paying almost $4 a gallon again. That's one thing I'm getting tired of with gas-powered cars. I miss the cheap gas. You brought the wrong car. What? You, you brought the wrong car. This is the right car. No, it's not. You wanted to bring the Taycan, didn't you? I didn't say I did. <laughs> I was deciding which one to bring. All right, we, we look kind of weird. You're, you're, you're repping Lotus, and I'm repping the GTI Rabbit. I don't know, and, and you're wearing cargo shorts. This isn't good. This isn't good. We're not starting the day off right. Here we go again. I cut down a tire earlier this year. I'm hoping I didn't run over something. Well, once we get to Cars and Coffee, I'll check the tires, but we're not starting this day off right at all. Not a bad turnout at all at Cars and Coffee. Got pretty much everything here today. The reason why I was disappointed you didn't bring the Taycan is because in this video I want to address a question. Can a car enthusiast love electric cars? And you own a Taycan but you also own a Lotus and a Porsche Boxster with a manual. So do you think that a car enthusiast can like electric yeah. cars? Of course. And why is that? Well, that's a good question. Um. <laughs> so what, why, did you, why did you buy an electric car? So I wanted something different from the usual gasoline cars, yep. right? So, and also, all I gotta do is just charge it up and then don't even have to worry but about But what about the stations. driving experience though? It's awesome. like, yeah, I agree with that. I totally agree with that. It's smooth, quiet, and it's fast. Exactly. But also, it corners better. They have a lower center of gravity. That is true. Yep. But I'm driving a big boat, so it's it, like... Yeah, but if you had a smaller electric car, though. Yes, yeah, so Like, if would. you had, like, an electric version of the Lotus, that would be a blast. It would be. Yeah. <laughs> So, Cars and Coffee was pretty fun. I didn't film too much. A little smaller than last month, which I wish I brought my camera for that. Uh, but still a great time. I can't tell if one of my tires are down. They all seem pretty filled, so I'm gonna keep my fingers crossed on that because we're gonna go for a cruise and still have a great time. We got Dunkin' Donuts number one customer over here. Look at all those receipts. 
Clean the car out, man. Come on. Okay, so I reset the tire pressure monitoring system and hopefully I don't get any more uh, pressure warnings. I've had this happen before in the past, so I'm just hoping that it's just one of those situations because it was somewhat cool this morning and then it got really hot almost like an hour later. So I'm wondering if maybe the temperature differences uh, played a role in that, but I'm keeping my fingers crossed. Grabbing food at Tony C's. Gonna fuel up and then we're going out on a cruise after, so it should be fun. And I'm putting you guys in the trunk. So I have been given the job to lead this group. As you can tell, my good friend Aaron showed up with the GTR, so we're gonna have a good time. It's been a nice long day, very warm, and we are gonna continue talking about the electric car bit later on in this video. Had a good time on this cruise. Didn't really film too much because I was leading. Didn't think it was gonna be much of a point just showing what was in front of me while we were driving, but I think it turned out pretty good. I wanna get their take on it though. Was it a good drive? How was the drive? Oh, sorry. <laughs> it was fun. Good. How was the drive? Up. Sweet. I thought you were Very taking good. us a, like around the world to get to nowhere, <laughs> but then it ended up being good. We did like a loop, right? Yeah, we did. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Because cool. I was looking at my thing, we were in stealth. Can a car guy like electric cars? Can a car, uh, under certain situations. Okay. I like, I wouldn't pick it as a primary car, maybe as a secondary. You can like it because they handle well. Then the charging time style, like there's, yeah. I don't know. There's, there's pros and cons. There's yeah, pros and cons. For sure. I, I, but on the consumer level. On the consumer. Because as an enthusiast, I think both of us can say, there's no way we can justify spending sixty thousand dollars on a car that makes yeah. no noise, that has no soul. Yeah, no, but from a consumer standpoint, like, would you take like a Honda CRV with the CVT? I don't know if I could do the price premium. But if they, but if you had a car that had a lower center of gravity, that had great handling, and decent performance. But Would you take that like over a CVT? Yes. Oh, yes. Oh man. I don't think I would. I honestly think I'd save the twenty. So you wouldn't even buy a Tesla? No. Okay. Probably not. Okay. I mean, I, they're good. Yep. It's just it's not for me. I don't know. That's just me though. It's tough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's tough. Yeah. I think we can all agree that one thing that's going to stick from last year is that we keep our lawn chairs in our cars and act like completely old men, Boomers. old car guys, just chilling out, chatting. Okay, so I haven't asked either one of you, sure. what is your thoughts on electric cars? Can car enthusiasts like electric cars? Can they like them, well, maybe? Yeah. It's hard, like, to, it, it's hard to it, get into the market. Like, like, what I'm saying is, like, for me, I'm not enthusiastic about yeah. them, but I can appreciate them when it comes to their handling and their performance. So I want to get your take on that. What they can do right now is cool. With speed, instant power, torque handling, low center of gravity. Yep. But in order to get those cars, you have to spend six figures. Right. So I know a bunch of cars I could get for half the price, right? You right. You buy an M2 competition, manual, S55 engine for half the price. Yep. Right? And then have some money left over for a daily. And then you have your daily car, you have your enthusiast car, versus getting a Taycan, the new e-tron GT RS, yep. um, Tesla Roadster, any Tesla, 
you're going to have to pay that extreme premium right. to get those things exactly, and to have sort of a green thumb. Right, and that's been the major problem yeah. in getting people like us into, into that, it. Right? Into that, right? In order to get that level of performance we want, right. it's going to cost exactly. very much exactly. versus a different brand, even Audi with the RS3 and TTRS. Yep. <laughs> You also don't get that sound. Exactly, yeah, so exactly. But do you think that if we could get that performance at a lower price point, that that all changes? Because we've seen people, we know people, both of us know people that have a Tesla yeah. that also own a gas-powered car that's a manual. Yeah. And they're, they seem to be enthusiastic about it. I don't think as a one car. Do you right, know? right. I think you'd have to get something where you're more interactive with the car. Yep. Whether it's paddles, whether it's sound, whether it's you know, manual gearbox, something. Yep. But I don't think as a one car deal you break into that. Right. Just yet for enthusiasts. Yep. Unless, you know, I know there are some car electric cars coming out with gears, right? Two gear systems. Yep. Right? But I, I don't think until there's some sort of more interaction in the car doing less than uh, Right. It's gonna make What's the question? So can car enthusiasts like electric cars? Sure, you can like whatever you want, I would say. And I think no matter what uh, no matter what, electric cars are coming and the performance are, is just getting better and better. Yep. Um, once I think we start seeing the range getting better and the price coming down is when they're going to become more and more competitive for different types of consumers. Yep. For myself, I would see an uh, electric car at a certain price point being a good daily driver. Yep. Especially if you don't need to use it for very long trips, like as a city commuter, charge it at home, just have something quiet and comfortable but then I would always have something else in the garage as a weekend car exactly. or an enthusiast car, something more engaging. Yep. But yeah, you can like electric car. Just It's definitely different, so you have to acknowledge that. For sure. All right, guys, I am going to wrap up this video. I have no idea what I filmed today. I think I've been all over the place, and I wish I filmed a lot more at Cars & Coffee. I had to lead the group when we did our cruise, so really didn't have anything interesting to film there, and I found a good place to wrap up this vlog and give my personal take on electric cars and the topic of can a car enthusiast love electric cars or at least appreciate them. And I want to be really transparent on this because part of me likes electric cars from the standpoint of their performance, their handling characteristics, and just the driving experience. And I mean that all in a relative term because I have driven a Ferrari, I've driven BMWs, like the M3 and M4, I've had a lot of fun filming those cars. But I've also filmed consumer vehicles like a Toyota RAV4 or a Subaru Forester. And I gotta be honest, the CVTs completely ruin the driving experience. It's more like, instead of a CVT, it's more like see you later. I don't want to experience a CVT. I don't want to live with a car that has a CVT. So in my mind, when it comes to electric vehicles like the Volvo XC40 Recharge or the Mustang Mach-E, those crossovers are relatively more fun to drive. Their handling is unbelievable. You have a lower center of gravity. It feels like you're driving a sports car. And then you have the initial torque, which is really an interesting feeling that I think you have to experience in person to understand. However, and my friends bring up this great point, it's pricing. Because you can't justify spending $60,000 for an electric vehicle, especially as an enthusiast, because at $60,000, you can buy a lot of fun stuff. And as my friend Aaron said, well, for a price of a Model 3, say a base model, like a standard range, would you buy a Model 3 or a Golf R? And for me, without hesitation, it's a Golf R. The Golf R to me is more fun. And also, of course, you have that modification that you can really make it your own. You can personalize it. Whereas the Tesla, even though it's fun when it comes to the propulsion and the accelerations, it's not really that fun as an enthusiast. And I think that's where the fine line is. And maybe I'm coming from an automotive journalist perspective, just because I filmed other cars uh, that are not car enthusiasts related, like a regular consumer car, like a crossover. And I'm kind of seeing it from both angles. But also, there's some reservations that I have with electric vehicles that I think I share with a lot of car enthusiasts and really people who love gas-powered cars in general. And that is one range. And that is a major issue because with the GTI, I can go about 350 miles on a full tank. I can probably push it to 400 if I drive very, very, very conservatively 
and electric cars don't have that range yet. Also for me, and the way electric cars are being marketed, they're the more environmentally friendly alternative. However, when you find out how they're mining these batteries, they're not environmentally friendly at all. And that really turns me off because if I do want to be more environmentally friendly and conscious, then I can't, I can't justify that. That doesn't make any sense to me. It's just that the end product is cleaner than the gas powered models. But to me though, as an enthusiast, I have to stick with the gas powered cars because even the BMW i4, which I have told friends in, uh, in group chats that I would be willing to put down $1,500 on a deposit. When you look at the pricing though, at $70,000 or $65,000 for an i4 M50, that's M3 and M4 money. And without question, I'm going M3 and M4 because I want that sound, I want that performance, I want that feeling. And that's one thing that electric cars can't give you and that is soul. And that's why as an enthusiast, we really can't love them or really enjoy them. But as an, as an automotive journalist, as a YouTuber, I have enjoyed them. I've actually had a lot of fun driving them and reviewing them. It's really interesting to see what these cutting edge technology is like and the performance and just the handling. I think it's really just what you hear, they have no soul, they're not fun to drive. And then when you drive them and you spend some time with them, yeah, they are pretty fun for what they are. But also when it comes to that recharging, when it comes to living with the car, to me it's an inconvenience. So at this point in 2021, I can't see myself buying an electric car. However, as an automotive journalist, as someone who has to see things from a non-biased perspective, I do see why people love them and I've learned to appreciate them and I could see myself at least as a daily driving one, but there's no way as a car enthusiast am I gonna give up a V8, V10, or V12. So that's where I'm coming from. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and this vlog. It's a completely different experience from the feature videos, but I also liked having my friends kind of give their perspectives as well. I wanna kinda of have a little more of a well-rounded topic and kinda of get different opinions on that. So let me know what you think. I think this video was really cool, a, a nice departure from what I normally do, and it was also fun just to have a, a video where I can go to Cars and Coffee and just really relax and enjoy. So guys, let me know what you think. Do you want me to vlog more? Also, again, thank you so much for watching this video. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe for more, and I'll see you guys next time.